Profits in a monopoly. Even though the firm may be a monopoly, they still have to be cognizant of maximizing profits. Your book has a really good explanation of this on pages 147 to 151. Please take those pages slow, ask questions in the forum if you're stumped, because I'm only going to emphasize a few key points. A monopolist maximizes profits by producing the quantity of output where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. MC equals MR. This makes a monopolist happy. Chart A shows the widest point of profit where costs are lowest and revenue is highest in comparison to each other. That is at the dotted line. The dotted line is 13 units. Chart B shows where MC equals MR as opposed to where demand, the price demand, would be for those items. Even though total revenue rises beyond 13 units, the total revenue is going up, the profit, the gray area in the middle, is going to fall because cost rises faster. The intersection of marginal revenue and marginal costs determine the profit maximization point for the monopolist. Let me say that again. The intersection of marginal revenue and marginal cost is the profit maximization point for a monopolist. Some other things you need to know. Limit pricing is basically the monopolist undercutting the competition. The dominant firm lowers its price below the point that the competition can survive. The competition starts operating at a loss and can't recover it as long as the dominant firm keeps prices lower than what they can afford. The dominant firm has the advantage of long-term position in the market, and they have substantial assets to allow them for short-term reduction in profits or even short-term losses. Once they've boosted the competition out, the price is raised back up to pre-fight levels or maybe even slightly higher to make up for the lack of lost profits. Price discrimination. Differential pricing for goods and services that are not justifiable by the difference in production costs. The best example of this is movie tickets. You go to the movie, well, when you were able to go to the movie before we were all locked down, when you go to the movie, the movie costs the same price to run. But there are three different prices based on when you were born. Eight, ten, or twelve dollars. There is no difference in how the movie was made or what it takes to show the movie. It, the only thing is to bring people in by lowering prices for certain populations. That is price discrimination. Two-part pricing is an imposition of an additional cost in order to gain the right to shop at a certain firm or to make you buy additional things once you're already in. Along with the examples in the book, uh, a couple good examples we have in the Rogue Valley are Bymart and Costco. At Costco, you pay 55 bucks a year, the access fee to be a member, and in exchange, you have the right to shop in that store and get the price bakes when you buy a 50 pound bag of basmati rice. You also have the ability to go in for this Costco student lunch program, all the food that they used to give away for free. Remember, that's not free. That's Tanstaffel. Disneyland had two-part pricing. Used to be up until the mid-80s that you had to buy a ticket book. And the tickets would allow you access to certain rides based on how fun they were. The A-ticket rides were like the carousel behind Cinderella's castle, uh, great moments with Mr. Lincoln. The e-ticket rides were the really good ones. They were the Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, stuff like that. The cover of the book that you see on the screen allowed you to get into the park. But if you wanted to ride the rides, you had to keep buying full ticket books. They didn't just sell packs of e-tickets or d-tickets. Each ticket, and it would be posted right here on the ride, you know, if you want to go on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, it's an e-ticket ride. So you had to keep buying the coupon books even though you were already in to part pricing. At Bymart, 
You don't have to pay money to become a member, but you do have to register. This registration is its the purest sense of cost because you have to give up your time and effort not only to fill out the paperwork, but also to show your card every time you go into the store. Now, what I would like you to read is the section on market performance in a monopoly. Be familiar with the concept, but don't don't real fret about it too terribly much. And, and that means that basically if it appears on the quiz, I'm going to be talking about it in general terms. And pages 163 and 164 seem to be, you know, I think they're kind of important. And if you were to ask me, I think that you should think they're kind of important too.